Travis Baldry here. Uh, I'm going to take a little time this evening to go through an extension that I've put together for Adobe Audition Creative Cloud that does non-destructive punch and roll recording. Um, it supports both Mac and Windows. Uh, once you've installed it, it's a dockable tool that you can use right inside of Adobe Audition. And in the multi-track editor, you can do a traditional non-destructive punch and roll recording style. So that basically means that the same sort of punch and roll functionality that you have in Pro Tools or Studio One or Reaper becomes available in Adobe Audition. I know this is a feature that people have asked for for a long time, many years, and it's just never, for whatever reason, gotten on the slate at Adobe. Um, using their SDK, I've built one that actually works, and I'm going to take some time here and go through the features, show you how it works. Uh, the plan is for this to be freely available on Adobe's extension marketplace, so anybody with Adobe Audition should be able to in the relatively near future, just download it and use it. At the time of this recording, I'm still in a late beta, just trying to make sure that all the issues are shaken out and it's ready for prime time. But so far, things are looking pretty good. So, uh, just to give you a little rundown on this. Once you've installed a plugin, it becomes available from Window Extensions. And you can see here, I've got Punch and Roll Point 2. That's my current version number. Once you activate it, here it is. Now, I've already got it docked down here in the bottom where I like to use it, but you can undock and float this little panel around and resize it and place it wherever you like, and Audition's going to remember where that is the next time you log in. Now, you can see there's a few settings here. I'm going to go ahead and dock this back where I, where I like to have it. Uh, we've got a metronome, and that's used for your pre-roll sounds so that you've got a, a click on the one second. Now that'll drop out two seconds before recording starts so you don't get any bleed into your recording. You've got your actual punch in button. Uh, clicking this will engage the process. And then I've got what's called a repunch button. And this is fantastic if you mess up your punch in. Uh, you, you punch, you wait for your pre-roll, you start to speak, you flub it up, you press this button, and it'll repeat the entire process without you having to replace your uh, your playhead or do any other fiddling with the keyboard or mouse. It makes it very quick to do iterative retakes if you have a couple of messes up in a row. Now above here you can see there's a pre-roll setting. Uh, it defaults to, uh, I believe, four seconds. I like to use three or four. Uh, but you can alter this for any pre-roll time that you like up to, I think, a maximum of 16 seconds. Uh, in addition to that, you can drag select a portion of the waveform, and it'll pre-roll just this, and then punch in right at the termination of the selection. We've also got a blend size setting, which I just added today. And basically what this does is, this controls how much overlap there is between your original recording and what you've punched in. So if you need a really long, smooth transition, you can do that. Or if you want no transition whatsoever, you can actually set your blend size down to zero and you'll have a hard cut on your punch in. I wouldn't recommend it, but the option is available for people who want that. I've also got a help button here, which will uh, pull up some browser-based help that just goes over some basic features and also has a link to this video. But let's go ahead and use this. I'll show you how it works. So first things first, you got to be in the multi-track view. This does not work in the waveform view. In fact, if you try to use it, you'll get a little message telling you what you need to do. Let's head back to multi-track. Now, other things of note. If you have been recording in Adobe Audition before, and you've been doing it in the waveform view, and you're just switching to multi-track, make sure that you arm your track. If you don't have this little red R here, it's not going to record anything. Another thing that you need to be aware of for this to function properly, your punch and roll track needs to be track one. There's quite a few reasons for this, actually. Uh, the main one is just so that the automation of this can be sure of exactly where it's going to be trimming the waveforms. You could have multiple tracks armed for record. There's no way to know which one it's going to go to or which one it's going to need to trim on. So to keep things clean, you're always going to want to have track one be your punch and roll track. Um, you can see down here in track two, I've got some room tone slices. 
Uh, this is for audiobook recordings, so I've got some uh, specific durations here, 0.6 seconds for my intro of room tone and what have you. Um, another thing that you want to be aware of and make sure that you have set, you're almost certainly not going to have to do this, but just so you know, if you go to the multi-track, wait, I'm sorry, multi-track clips preferences, you'll see that there's this option for automatically cross-fade overlapping clips. You want that to be selected. This is what allows us to guarantee that every time you punch in, you get one of these nice little blends. So I've got a chapter here recorded, and I'm just showing you the, each of these little slices as a punch. Um, because this is non-destructive, each of these clips actually is longer than it appears. Whenever you punch in, you're getting a new track that'll be recorded. So you don't lose any data whatsoever. And you can go back in after the fact and adjust where your punches happen. You can change how they blend. Uh, as I say, it's non-destructive. Uh, let's see, what else have we got here? I'm going to go ahead and do a punch now. You listen to me talk for God knows how long. Let's get to it. Um, now... For the purposes of this first demonstration, I'm just going to use these buttons that are on the, uh, the, the actual dialogue here. Now, there is hotkey support, and I'll get to that in a few seconds, but you have a couple ways to go about doing this. So I'm going to go ahead. I had heard must have resulted from purely natural and harmless causes. I picked my punch in point. I'm just going to hit the punch in button. I've got my pre roll set to, let's do it at three, no, let's do four seconds. Must have resulted from purely natural and harmless causes. And now I begin narrating whatever comes next. I don't have the text in front of me, so I don't know what it is, but it doesn't really matter. This is just a demonstration. And I've completed my punch in. Now you can see as I zoom in that it's overlapped the two clips and that it has cross-blended between them. And I still have all of this waveform data that I just recorded over for my punch. All right, so now let's try a repunch. I'll show you how that functions. Uh, I'm gonna, let's just pick a new punch in location. We're gonna punch. Helpless for many hours within the cave, yet nothing had molested me. Oh, molested, uh, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. I messed up. I'm going to hit re-roll. Helpless for many hours within the cave, yet nothing had molested me. But this time, I read exactly what I needed to read, and my punch-in is perfect. So you can do that as many times in a row as you need to, and you only need one keystroke or one button click to engage it. Now, these can be mapped to hotkeys. We have to be a little bit fiddly about it, because this is not a natively supported Adobe Audition product, so I don't have the ability to add new hotkeys that the program doesn't already have. So the way that this currently works is that the toggle loop function, control L, is bound to punch in. So if you were to press control L on your keyboard, or if you're on a Mac, you were to press option L, that would do a punch in. Now you can remap that by going into your keyboard shortcuts and changing it in here. So for instance, toggle loop. There's toggle looping. And you can change this shortcut to anything that you want to use for a punch in. Note that it will also toggle looping, but for the purposes of this, we don't care. That's not a feature that you commonly use while you're doing your recording for an audiobook, let's say. Uh, now, the other command is for repunch, and that is bound to, I believe, pause, which is control shift space or option shift space on a Mac. Uh, so you can set those keys to whatever you have used in another software package or whatever makes sense for you, and then you can do everything with a hotkey. So I'll just go ahead and use my hotkey here. I'm just going to go ahead and do my punch. Many hours within the cave, yet nothing had molested me. And then I'm doing my punch in. And I have space bar to stop. Any There, there are num numerous ways to stop your, your actual uh, punch or your record space. You can actually press the punch in button again and it will cancel. Um, I should also note that Blasted. if you start this and you don't get to the record point, you can repress the key and it'll cancel without doing anything at all, 
which is sometimes handy if you lost your place in the text or, you know, your cat just walked into the room. Um, anything else? So once you've done this, if you have not done multi-track recording in Adobe Audition before, you're going to want to actually bounce this down to your final track. So in multi-track, you can do bounce to new track. It'll compile everything. You've got a single waveform with all of your blends. Then you can bring it over into the waveform editor, which is where I like to do my final edits, uh, because I can use the spectral view so I can look for any pops or clicks or, or things that I need to deal with. But all of your transitions for all your punch-ins should be nice and smooth. Um, there, uh, you can also, of course, export your track from multi-track. You don't have to bounce to a new track. You can export it as a file. That's neither here nor there. That's entirely up to you. Um, so I think that's about it. I mean, overall, it's not conceptually that complicated. And if you've done punch and roll before, it works exactly the way that you expect. Um, I'm pretty excited about this. People have been asking for it for a long time. I have a few beta testers using it right now that are very pleased with the way it's working. And I hope to wrap it up soon and get it available on that exchange marketplace so that uh, more people can take advantage of it. Thanks for watching, um, and I hope this, this uh, extension helps you out.